Hello everyone, I am Karthik and welcome to the third project in the series that we are calling Flip Supremacy. So far we have done two tutorials and today we are going to create something like this as you might have seen in the intro as well. Let's create a geometry network and get started. I'll name it sim, change the color here and uh, inside what I'm going to do the first thing is I'll bring in the product that we want our flip sim to interact with. Okay, this is going to be working as a collision so I'm gonna create a alembic I'll bring in the geometry this is our product okay let's uh, use a unpack node so our product has been unpacked and as you can see there's UV tech And as you can see we have UVs here, I'll just come here and change the uh, and transfer the path attribute. After that I'm gonna create a convert node and uh, this is just precautionary measure. Uh, we do not want anything else other than polygon so this will just convert everything here to polygon. After that I'll use a transform node and uh, basically I'll change the size of it. Um, so this is the main face here okay and I want it to be facing directly here so that it will be easier for us to visualize it so I'll just come to the right view and uh, I want this face to be completely facing here so I'll move it about 90 degrees something like this and I also want to change the uniform scale here to 0.67 okay all right, so this is our collider geometry, our main product, and I can create a null here. Product. Okay. Now we need to create our our source for our flap. I'll be using a sphere. This is our sphere. Let's move it up a bit. Something like this is fine. Okay. After this, let's connect a flip dot source here. What this flip dot source will do is it will guess uh, give us particles or points uh, which will work as a which will work as a source for our flip simulation okay that's why we have this node and it's it is called flip dog flip source we do not want the vdb here so this flip dog uh, source is giving us surface the volume and the particles so a particle group called particles we do not want the surface so i'll come to the blast i've created a blast node and i'll delete the surface here we only want the particles okay so we have these particles here and we need to, if you want to increase the number of particles here, we can come to a particle separation. And if I increase it, you will see that the amount of particles is decreasing. So if I want more particles, basically what I can do is I'll decrease the particle separation. Okay. All right. We will change the settings later, but uh, the first thing that we can do is I'll create a null here. I'll call it flip in and now that we have a source and a collision we will uh, we'll do our dop network let's create a dop network so that we can have a basic understanding of whatever we are uh, basic understanding of all the settings that we'll be using are they right or not uh, the only way to define that or only way to calculate is through simulation so let's go inside dop network I'm going to create a gravity. This will work as a gravity force, obviously. Other thing we need is a flip solver and the flip object. Okay, so as I said in my previous tutorials also, and uh, I'll be creating a, I'll be creating a one hour 
tutorial which will cover all the basics of the flip so that uh, once all our projects 25 projects are completed um, in the course or alone you will uh, get uh, the basics of the flip so that you understand all the all the requirements the default settings okay so this is our flip object what flip object does is it stores our particles here it stores our points okay so let's connect our flip object to our flip solver let's connect our flip solver to our gravity flip solver is basically the brain of this flip simulation okay as you can see there's a brain symbol here as well so that is that we can come to a flip object and uh, change the soft path here and we can bring in our flip so this is our flip in and uh, i'll change the initial type to particle field instead of surface type and this is what we are getting this is our particles that we have generated outside the source particles but the only thing is we need to visualize them better so instead of sprites come to guides come to particles instead of sprites in the visualization we will change them to particles okay all right okay so we'll come to our flip solver and uh, one more thing that i think you should know is we'll come to a flip solver come to volume motion come to volume limits and as you will see if you come to volume limits, the box size is 50 by 50 by 50. That is 50 meters by 50 meters by 50 meters. For a large scale simulation, this probably, this usually will work, okay? But not for small scale simulation, it's too large. And the reason that I want to make it smaller is, this simulation, this small scale simulation that we are doing here will obviously work perfectly fine here. But our flip solver, will use our computer memory to calculate all of this space here as well so we do not want to waste our time and computer memory so i'll just make it 10 by 10 by 10 so our bounding box here is this 10 by 10 by 10 10 meters by 10 meters by 10 meters in the x y and z direction okay okay other thing that we can do is we can come to now actually let's let's run the simulation first and see what we're getting if i run this we'll see the gravity is working fine the particles are moving down and uh, they're going out of the bounding box which always happens if you come to flip object you have an option here which is close boundaries if i turn this on you will see that this bounding box will work as a boundary also now and uh, our flip uh, flip particles can collide with them so let's play this and you will see that the particles are behaving as fluid but they are also colliding with the bonding box okay but what i want you to know one important thing to note is we have a lot of particles currently not a lot but we have enough particles here when we go to our second frame you will see that suddenly the particles are going down in a number and why is that the reason for that is while the particle separation here we have changed it to 0 0.25 to bring in a lot more particles so we have around 32,000 particles here we have changed the particle separation here but when we go to our flip so uh, dot network and we go to our flip object you will see that we have a particle separation here as well and this is higher in value than the particle separation here this is 0 0.025 and the particle separation here is 0 0.1 we need to keep the particle separation here and the particle separation outside on the dop, dop, uh, dop source the same okay so what i'm going to do to, to do that is i'll just copy this i'll come to flip source here and paste relative reference in the particle separation okay so now the particle separation is 0 0.1 here and the particle separation is 0 0.1 here i'll change it back to 0 0.025 let's go to frame one and you can see that when i run the sim now you will see that the particles are not not uh, vanishing on frame one we have particles 30,000 around 
and on frame 2 the model particles is going to be same okay so the particles are not vanishing because we have particle separation equal here in the flip object and in the dope source another thing that we need to calculate here in the flip source is the voxel size voxel size depends on two things what is going what is going to be the value of voxel size we can calculate it easily by particle separation and the grid scale we will multiply the value of particle separation with the value of grid scale and we will get a good enough number of voxel size here the value so we have already used a copy a paste parameter here so uh, paste relative reference so i'll just use a paste relative reference here as well so the particle separation value is in the voxel size as well but we need to multiply that with our grid scale as well and the grid scale is almost always 2 so i'll just multiply it by 2 and you will see that particle separation is 0 0.025 and the voxel size is double so i usually keep it this way the uh, voxel size is always double the particle separation now if i run the simulation let's see what we're getting Okay, we can actually decrease it even further and let's see how many particles, 64,000 particles, not bad. Okay, so for our testing, this is, um, this is a okay setup here, this is a nice setup. And the other thing that we need to do now is we need to bring in our our main geometry, our collision geometry. So for that, I'll just use a merge node so that we can merge our collider. And to bring in our collider, I'll be using a static object node. Okay. In the merge, make sure that the relationship, uh, effector relationship is mutual so that both our collider and our particles are affecting each other otherwise um, sometimes if you don't do that and uh, if you don't do that and it is set at default value which is left input affect right input and you have connected the nodes in wrong order you will see that flip solver is in the left side and the static object is on the right side so our flip object uh, our flip simulation will affect our collider but that's not what we want so whatever order it is anywhere just keep the uh, affected relationship to mutual and it was it will always work okay there are some more things that we can do oh first we need to bring in our collider to bring in our collider we need to create the polygon version of it and also for flip we will be needing to create a volume version uh, because flip basically is a mix of particle simulation and volume simulation okay so we will come outside we will go to our, our object here and to create a collider I will use a collision source and what collision source does basically is it provides us with a polygon version of the collider and a VDB version of the collider. So this is the VDB version. Uh, we will improve it but let me just name them properly first. This is our, this is our poly version and this is our volume version. Okay. Come to collision source to fix this. Um, this is not at all looking like our object we actually want a good reference or uh, the shape should be same okay so we'll come to our volume to visualize it come to collision source come to the volume and there's a voxel size here as well i usually keep it at a value where i can see the see the proper reference proper proper um reference of the polygonal object here okay in the volume 
so let's decrease it to maybe 0 0.025 and this is this has improved a lot you can compare this is our polygon version this is our volume version but we can actually make it even more smaller so 0 0.01 is yeah it's working I think I'll increase it I decrease it further to 0 0.085 Okay, this will work. We'll come to our dot network, come to static object, and here in the swap path, this is going to be the path where we will bring our polygon version of the collider. Come to collision, come to uh, mode here, and change it to volume sample. And here, the proxy volume is going to be volume. Okay, if I change, if I turn off our display geometry and I turn on my volume collider VDV we'll see that this is what we are getting uh, don't keep it turned on while you are running the flip sim because this will take a lot of memory I'll just turn it off and use the polygon version of the collider okay all right guys so this was the preview for the third tutorial in the series called flip supremacy you can join the course if you are interested in learning about flip simulations of different kinds uh, i'll be covering about 25 tutorials in this series and for the first 20 students there's a discount you can get the course for 85 dollars so see you in the course